Hello friends, this video on excretory products and their elimination part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now look at the process of urine formation. How is urine formed? So by now we know that where is urine formed? Urine is formed in the nephron. And where exactly in the nephron? So in the nephron the first part is glomerulus. So blood will enter into the glomerulus and the liquid which will come out of the collecting duct that is going to be the urine. So what is urine as such? We all know it is a liquid byproduct which is secreted by the kidneys. So kidney is the place and to be more precise nephrons in the kidney is the place where urine is formed. The main purpose of urine is to remove wastes like urea, uric acid and excess of water from the blood. The filtration occurs in kidneys. So when I say filtration, now where are these waste materials present inside the body? The waste materials are also present in the blood. So the blood needs to be filtered. The moment you filter blood, the filtrate will consist of all the waste materials and that filtrate needs to be thrown out of the body and that is thrown in the form of urine. So the basic filtration unit inside the kidney is nephron. So now we will see how exactly the formation of urine take place in a nephron. As I mentioned before also that each kidney has a million of nephrons back together. So each nephron will be producing some urine and all these urines together will come out of the kidney through the ureter and will get stored in the urinary bladder. Now the process of urine formation takes place in three important steps. So what are the three steps? First is filtration, then reabsorption and finally secretion. So these are the three steps which together lead to the formation of urine. Now when I say filtration of course I mean filtering the blood. So the blood needs to be filtered so that the good parts of the blood is on one side and the bad part of the blood is on the other side. Reabsorption where now out of the filtrate which is obtained as a result of the first step in that filtrate also there might be some good useful things for example there might be some water or there might be some ions which can be reabsorbed by the body. So that reabsorption will take place in this step. Secretion. Now even after filtration has happened, there might be some other waste products present somewhere else in the body. So they also are secreted back into this filtrate. So as a result of these three steps, at the end of these three steps, we are left with a filtrate which contains only the waste materials and the excess water and the excess ions and all those stuff. So that is then thrown out of the body through the urethral aperture. So now we will understand the urine formation stepwise. So the first step is filtration and this process or that is filtration of blood takes place in the glomerulus and that is why it is also known as glomerular filtration. So here the blood reaches the glomerulus by the afferent arteriole. So here in this picture you can see that this is the afferent arteriole and it takes the blood inside the glomerulus. Now what happens when the blood enters inside the glomerulus? Now as I had mentioned before that there is a high pressure created inside the glomerulus. The blood pressure is extremely high and that is because of the difference of the diameter of the afferent arteriole and the efferent arteriole. So if you see here, the afferent arteriole is thicker when compared to the efferent arteriole. Due to this difference in the diameters, a high blood pressure is created inside the glomerulus and this high blood pressure forces most of the plasma through the lining of the capillaries into the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule that means this blood blood consists of plasma the blood cells proteins and so many other things now due to this high pressure a lot of component most part of the plasma is moved from glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule that it is it is able to cross this membrane between glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule however not all particles are able to move into the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule the plasma and most of the smaller particles are able to move but the bigger red blood cells or the bigger proteins are not able to move so whatever is left out goes out through the efferent artery wall
that is in this direction. So what happens here? Increased pressure of blood in the glomerulus causes a three layer filtration of blood. So what is this three layer filtration of blood? As I said, the most, most component of the plasma will move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Now in order to move from glomerulus to Bowman's capsule, it actually needs to pass through three layers. So what are those three layers? Let us quickly have a look at the three layered filtration of blood. So those three layers are the endothelium of glomerular blood cells. Now this is a bigger picture. So this is my glomerulus. So these are the glomerular blood vessels, the capillaries, right? So the endothelium of these glomerular blood vessels. So this is one layer which they have to pass. The second layer is the epithelium of the Bowman's capsule. That is the epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule which is also known as the podocytes. This is the Bowman's capsule and the covering or the layer, uppermost layer. And the, epi, the cells which form the epithelium of the Bowman's capsule are called podocytes. So that is another layer. And the third layer is the basement membrane. That is the layer in between these two layers, in between the endothelium and the epithelium. That is called the basement membrane. So this is layer 1, this is layer 2 and this one is layer 3. So these three layers need to be crossed. That means the blood enters from the afferent artery or here and then the blood crosses all these and enters into the uh, Bowman's capsule. So what for forces this movement of blood? It is due to the high blood pressure which is created inside the glomerulus. Now please note that it is not that the entire blood moves into the Bowman's capsule. Most of the plasma moves into the Bowman's capsule except the bigger sized proteins and the red blood cells. So whatever is left out is the concentrated part of the blood. You remember the components of blood plasma is watery. And, but red blood cells are quite thicker and concentrated. So here whatever goes out through the efferent arteriole is the concentrated red blood cells with the proteins. Right? And now whatever has moved into the uh, Bowman's capsule, that is the filtered plasma. And this plasma will then continue to move down the different parts of the nephron. So from Bowman's capsule, it will move into the PCT. From there, it will get into the Henle's loop, then DCT and then collecting that. So this filtered plasma will gradually form the urine. Now the question is and what happens to the concentrated blood which gets into the efferent arteriole? We will look at them a little. So from this we saw that the filtered plasma, filtered plasma from the glomerulus moves into the Bowman's capsule. From Bowman's capsule it will further move down to PCT whereas the concentrated blood cells it will move through the efferent arteriole and where will it go? From here it will go to the capillaries surrounding. It will get into the capillary network around the PCT. So we will talk about that a little later. So this is what happens at this stage. Now this fine filtration of blood through the three layered membranes is known as ultra filtration because the filtration does not happen in one layer but it happens through three different layers. So this fine filtration is called ultra filtration. So this is the first step. So at the end of the first step only the blood gets filtered. So you are able to actually find out what are the waste products. So most of the waste products are present in the filtered plasma right now. However, the concentrated blood cells also might have some of the waste products. So we will now see that gradually how the components uh, will, uh, actually the useful components will get reabsorbed. Okay, now another important point to note here is that these podocytes, as I said, the epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule, now they are arranged in such a way that there are minute pores in between. So there are minute gaps in between. Because you might ask that, okay, if you say that this plasma is filtered and it moves from the glomerulus to the Bowman's capsule, but where is the gap that they can move? Now that gap is created by these podocytes which are arranged in such a way that they 
there are minute gaps in between or minute pores in between and these pores are known as slit pores or filtration slits so with those slits the blood actually blood or the filtered plasma actually enters into the bowman's capsule so all the components of plasma are filtered except the big rbcs and the proteins so therefore the left out blood is all concentrated now when we talk about filtration it becomes important to talk about something called gfr which is glomerular filtration rate that is the rate at which this process of filtration take place now it has been observed that almost 1100 to 1200 milliliter of blood is filtered by the kidneys in one minute so this much amount of blood is filtered by the kidneys in one minute now if you actually try to compare this amount of blood you'll get to know that it is almost 20 percent of the total blood which is pumped out by each ventricle of the blood of the heart you remember ventricles and auricles ventricles are the pumping chambers they pump blood to different parts of the body so this blood is almost 20 percent of the total blood which is pumped out by the ventricle that means whatever if ventricle is for example just the data is for example if ventricle is pumping out 100 milliliter of blood to different parts of the body out of that 20 milliliter is being filtered by the kidneys in one minute now the how do we define glomerular filtration rate this is the amount of filtrate formed by the kidneys per minute is called glomerular filtration rate now if i say that the amount of filtrate that is being formed filtrate is being formed that means filtration is taking place this much amount of blood is getting filtered so that is the amount of filtrate which is formed in one minute is called glomerular filtration rate now generally for a healthy human adult, the glomerular filtration rate is approximately 180 liters per day. So this was per minute and now in one complete day it is around 180 liters. So this is how it would be. For example, this is your glomerulus and here glomerular filtration takes place. So this is the blood which enters through the afferent arteriole and here glomerular filtration will occur. So whatever filtrate, the amount of filtrate which moves into the Bowman's capsule, that is the amount of filtrate. So the amount of filtrate that is formed in one minute is called glomerular filtration rate. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.